Hey guys, how is your NCLEX review going? Um, so in this video, we will be talking about Bell's palsy, which is basically a paralysis or weakness of the muscles, usually on one side of the face. Now, what usually occurs is that there is a damage to the facial nerve that controls the muscles on either side or one side of the face, and this causes that side of the face to somewhat droop or you know, kind of look weird. Now, understand that this nerve damage may also affect your sense of taste and how your body excrete or secrete tears and saliva. Okay, now here's the thing. This condition can actually come on suddenly, often overnight, and usually gets better on its own within a few weeks. And like I mentioned before, um, I will go over only the most important things that you do need to know to pass your NCLEX exam, okay? So this is somewhat just, you know, the basic but simple yet very, very important things that you have to know. Now, Bell's palsy is not a result of a stroke or a, what we call a transient ischemic attack or TIA. Now, while stroke and TIA can cause facial paralysis, there's actually no link between Bell's palsy and either one of these conditions. Usually, the damage is caused by an inflammation to the, to the facial nerve and the muscles uh, surrounding within the area, okay? So... What causes Bell's palsy? The cause of Bell's palsy is not very clear, but most cases are thought to be caused by the herpes virus simplex that causes cold sores, which you know any any of us can have. Which I believe that's the her herpes uh, simplex two herpes. Now, like I mentioned before, in most cases of Bell's palsy, the nerve that controls muscles on one side of the face is damaged by inflammation. Okay, now. Let's look at the symptoms of a patient with Bell's palsy, okay? Now, this can include um, weakness or paralysis of one side of the face that can cause it, like I mentioned before, to droop, okay? And this is the main symptom. Now, also the patient can have a hard time closing their eyes on, uh, on that side of the face. And like I mentioned before, drooling can also be a main symptom. Uh, also, eye problems such as excessive uh, tearing or dry eye can happen, right? Also, the loss of ability to taste different kind, kinds of foods. Uh, pain, usually behind the ear, can also be a main symptom. And numbness in the affected side of the face can, can be another very important symptom. Now, how do we diagnose these patients? Usually, um, the doctor will be asking the patient questions, such as how the, the symptoms developed and how it started. And he, the doctor can also... Um, give a physical and a neurological exam to check the facial nerve function okay and if and if the cause of the symptoms is still not clear the, the doctor might ask for other tests such as a blood test an mri or a cat scan okay now how do we usually treat these patients now believe it or not most people with bell's palsy can actually recover completely without treatment in usually a month or two or two months but for uh, for a small number of people who have a permanent muscle weakness and the uh, other problems that you know that is affected due to the Bell's palsy a treatment with corticosteroids such as prednisone so prednisone is a big one for this one can help likely regain all the most of the facial movement okay also sometimes antiviral medications such as acyclovir which as we know is a corticosteroid medication can also be used to help alleviate some of the symptoms so this is it for now i will continue on on the next video again thank you so much for your time uh, i make this very short simple and straight to the point and i really appreciate you watching this video i wish you the best in your nclex exam Thank you so much, guys. Thank you, and God bless.